walk through this door and enter a nightmare of supernatural horror. Seven Doors of Death, Evil's Fatal Omen. Who else is here? There's nobody here. I can feel a presence. Somebody else is in here. <laughs> Seven Doors of Death. Uh, my parents owned and operated a small circuit of theaters upstate New York, uh, which consisted of drive-ins and also conventionals, regular theaters. And I started in exhibition when I was very, very young by virtue of my parents' position in exhibition. I was no unfortunate that arrived in this business. I came from upper middle class families, family rather, and um, they were property owners and theater owners. So breaking into the business wasn't difficult for me. Also, um, my mother's brother was the president of United Artists. And there was some degree of relationship there. And it was by virtue of that relationship there that when he went to Fox, which was back in the 60s, I also went to 20th Century Fox back in the 60s and um, held important sales positions there for a, num a few short years where I basically learned the business of what I consider major league distribution to include um, advertising, so on and so forth. And then when I left Fox, I was offered a position with Disney, an important sales position with Disney. But I'd had enough of the corporate thing, and I decided that I wanted to go back into the business, which I was familiar with, which was exhibition, plus the fact, set up a distribution, an independent distribution operation, because we controlled a number of theaters, which would make me by virtue of this small circuit, attractive to guys who were independent producers, whose motion pictures went out, not via the, the regular normal studio system, but also were at a level whereby they were looking for a driving audience and a guerrilla type audience, a redneck audience to a certain extent. So we had theaters in those areas, so that made us attracted to them. So that's how I sort of segued from being raised in exhibition to independent distribution. I would acquire feature films, doctor them up, and things of this nature. And from an economic point of view, we found out that you know you could buy um, representatively inexpensive, fine, well-produced, action-oriented films from Italy, uh, Japan, and a few other countries. And all it would take to do was the Americanization of these pictures. Evil will invade the world. I would visit Italy uh, once a year, or maybe a couple of times in an 18-month period, and acquire these films. Uh, having a practice of always paying our bills on time and meeting our commitments, and thereby developing a reputation as a company that said it would do something and subsequently did it, we were valuable to independent producers who would visit us in the United States to tell us about their future plans, or I'd have people over there who would tell me about this particular picture has been done, that particular picture has been done, and it can be acquired. And while over there, I met, the, I met producers that specialized in gorilla and gore and action pictures. They knew that we also controlled 42nd Street theaters to a certain extent, so we were valuable to them. And we acquired the picture, frankly speaking, for about $35,000. And I think I had to put about another $10,000 into the picture. And I think it shows us somewhere in the area about $700,000 profit. 
thus far. So, as you can tell, with that extraordinary return on investment, that was excellent for us. And we did that, I would say, several dozen times over the course of 25, 30 years. Creating titles, well, the Beyond really wasn't strong enough for us. Uh, also, um, Seven Doors was part of the script of the picture. Uh, and uh, the production involved itself with seven particular doors that people had to go through, and each one led them into another area of uh, further menace and problems. The seven dreaded gateways are concealed in seven cursed places. Woe be unto him who ventures near without knowledge. So that's why we decided to name it The Seven Doors of Death. As a matter of fact, I believe, if I recall, there is a book that tells, uh, the, the picture opens up and somebody is flipping over a book and it mentions there are seven doors. So we saw um, a symbiotic tie-in to the picture that made sense because in the picture itself there was a book, you will pass through the seven doors and so on and so forth. On a gloomy, rain-swept night, a ferocious battle is being fought between two girls and a vicious, deranged fiend on a murderous rampage. Paralyzed with fear and on the verge of hysteria, they try to escape its chillingly merciless savagery. They know it's there, behind these doors, the seven doors of death. Uh, I showed it to Toby Hooper who was the director of, uh, of the original Chainsaw Massacre and a number of other successful pictures at that time to include Kem Hinkle, the original writer of uh, Chainsaw Massacre. And they liked the picture and they were generous enough to give me these quotes. Terrifying, unique, one of the best horror films I've ever seen. Kim Hinkle author of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, filled with unrelenting excitement, a truly original haunted house thriller. Tobe Hooper, director of Poltergeist, Seven Doors of Death. Yes, Lewis Fuller, because Lewis Fuller was the son of uh, a well-known American director who had been blacklisted, uh, I think Sam Fuller, Sam Fuller, and he did the post-production work with the creation of the new title. We were selling to an audience that we felt that while the picture had a ton of gore, um, it had a great English track, so on and so forth, if in fact you didn't anglicize them, uh, you'd be turning off your audience. So it would defeat your purpose to go out with them. You couldn't subtitle these pictures and, because they didn't warrant subtitling in the English language. They weren't an art picture. They were a, uh, it was a guerrilla picture, a picture that primarily dealt on sensationalism. So subsequently, we had to dress it so it didn't look foreign and it didn't represent anything of a controversial nature, like do I want to see this picture? Do I want to think about it? Do I want to see it? We wanted to do the advertising in a fashion and create the credits on the picture so there would be nothing for people to think about. There wouldn't be anything for them to think in terms of, no, I don't want to see this picture because it might, con it might not convey what I'm looking for. We knew it conveyed what they were looking for, but we had to dress it in the language of what they were looking for. Seven Doors of Death, it will scare the hell out of you. Rated R, under 17, not admitted without parent. Quentin Tarantino is a magnificent director, magnificent writer, you know, is great, but he didn't discover anything. When we first took this picture on, Clinton Tarantino must have been this high. So he did discover this picture. <laughs> well, uh, I'm happy over it. Uh, it'd be ridiculous to turn around and feel any other way. It could be forgotten like the 200, 300 other pictures that I've handled have been forgotten, and justifiably so, too. 
you know, we've heaped these on an unsuspecting public too long. They should be, re they should be remembered in immortality. Time has run out. Death is erupting, violent, berserk, untamed. Can anyone survive? Enter if you dare and see seven doors of death. I, I, I never acquired these pictures with the idea in mind they should only play a few select theaters. I was always looking to sort of utilize my relationships with the major circuits that existed at that particular time, especially companies like RKO and Stanley Warner and United Artists. I enjoyed great relationships there for 35, 40 years. So if I would go out and see their film buyers there, many times I would screen the picture to them. They knew that we were capable of putting on a, a solid campaign so they wouldn't be embarrassed there. Uh, they would have weak periods in their uh, exhibition schedule and they were happy to have a picture from Terry Levine or people like Terry Levine that was being supported with a good representative campaign that could gross representatively well and they could not quite pay off in the dark but just a few points above that. The patient screamed disturbing me, performed removal of vocal cords. His name is Dr. Butcher, MD medical deviate. He has perverted the science of medicine for his own maniacal means. <laughs> Dr. Butcher, MD, medical deviate. So we needed a title like Dr. Butcher, and Dr. Butcher against that advertising tells you what this is all about. And then if you get a flatbed truck and you put operating tables on it, and uh, you have pretty nurses in flimsy, in flimsy attire and crazy young men running around with stethoscopes and you park it outside of the National Theatre on Broadway until the police demand that you take it away and then you drive it around the block and re-park it, uh, re it again. It can guarantee to bring you a gross at that National Theatre of $62,000 for that particular week while playing it less than three blocks away at our Lyric Theatre on 42nd Street for another 60 grand. So the game was very good in those days and that's the reason for creating titles that are marketable that do not cause the public to have to think, hey, what's going on here with this? You touch their live wire immediately. Make them die slowly. Cannibal Ferox might be great for the producers, or it might mean significantly more in the Italian language. But uh, what does Ferox mean over here? Is that some form of soda that you might use in baking or something? Make them die slowly. Okay, they did die slowly in the picture. The picture dealt with archaeologists going into some quasi-jungle someplace like that and being captured by the uh, primordial people who lived in the jungle and being subjected to, to decapitations, castrations, and all manner of other horrifying indignities. And when you get caught in this jungle, there's no bail and no jail. There's just punishment and pain. <laughs> Cruel, barbaric, primitive. For what they've done, make them die slowly. And, um, uh, and that's the way I would sit down and work out some titles and taglines and put them aside for about 20 minutes, then go back and edit them. And over a couple of days, I had the complete characteristics of the campaign set out, give it to our art department, and they would take it from there. In inherent in the picture was all of these great slides which enabled you to blow up into uh, uh, huge lifestyle stands and things. So you had the raw, gross material. You didn't have to do crummy line drawings and things of that nature or pay for some, some crackpot artist to come up with something. It was already in the picture. 
So it was available to you. So you'd be foolish not to take advantage of that. So what we would do, we would cut out uh, uh, 50 particular slides from the picture and blow them up, get stuff that wasn't blurry or anything, uh, uh, that wasn't blurry, and build fronts with these things. And we would have the graphics, the horrifying graphics for the picture, uh, bas basically in panels of four feet by four feet which you could dress an outside of a theater quite well with. They're pretty accomplished filmmakers. Um, a number of the champions of the sport, uh, names basically escape me, uh, great names, uh, Dario Argento and a couple of other guys from there could turn out these pictures rather rapidly and, quick, and quickly and also they made them because they recognized the appeal that they had for the non-English speaking areas, to the Japans, the Koreas, and they were selling to these territories. They are accomplished filmmakers as well as accomplished film distributors. Um, they're very good at advertising and they simply make inexpensive quality pictures. And they can make a scummy production, something that looks creepy. A, a picture, you've ne Heschel Gordon made a lot of pictures, and all of his pictures had that same, you know, home picture movie or home movies USA look. But you can see pictures coming from Italy, or you used to be able to see pictures coming from Italy, that would really have some quality to them that if somebody told you that they were made by an American studio or an English studio, you would believe them. Seven doors of death. Your blood will run cold as the icy fingers of death tighten their stranglehold. Seven doors of death, it will scare the hell out of you.